The screen share green screen journey continues and in this video we'll be looking at Stinger transitions. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec and in this video, video three of five, uh, we're looking more into how you can use the uh, new upcoming uh, feature in Ecamm Live, currently in the uh, beta, for uh, basically where you can apply green screen to a screen share overlay. <laughs> so that means that you can make presentations in things like Keynote and PowerPoint uh, simply with a green background to the slide. Uh, and then all of that green will appear transparent and so that you can put these sort of overlays over the top of your uh, your Ecamm Live. So yesterday, uh, or whenever it was for you, it was yesterday for me, <laughs> we did the one with the, in fact, let's just have a little look at, at it, shall we? We did one with the sort of hollow text overlay. So I'll just quickly toggle this on. Should have been a bit more prepared, really, shouldn't I? So we did this one that basically swipes over the screen and then you can see right through that text uh, and then it swipes out again. So today we're going to do one, actually, it's a little bit similar to that really, um, but it's actually a Stinger transition. And those are the sorts of transitions that you see where uh, they sort of come across the uh, the top of the scene. And then as it exits the scene, we're then into a completely new scene. Uh, so that is basically what we're going to look at. And I'm going to show you how you can do this in Keynote using the green screen method. Um, but actually, it's only one extra step or a couple of steps actually uh, to then just take this out and use it as a video to actually use this as a stinger just within Ecamm Live without even using the green screen method. Uh, and then what I'll do at the end is I'll show you how you can link this with Stream Deck so that with one button you can add the stinger and then go straight on into the actual uh, next scene. So it makes it uh, a bit more of a sort of dynamic scene change. So first of all, let me uh, just come straight into it, shall I? I'll come into my screen sharing for a moment. Whoops, I need to turn that one off. There we go. <laughs> so here we've got Keynote and this is the uh, the two slides that we've made in videos one and two. Uh, I'll obviously leave a link to those down in the description. Uh, we had this one where we had this little silly camera animation uh, and this is the one where the, uh, the text moves in. So uh, something like that. That's uh, basically how I did that. This is just green text. And so Ecamm Live just keys out the green. It's as simple as that. <laughs> so once you get that concept, there's no end of possibilities of what you can do with it. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, though, is I'm actually going to uh, come and create a Stinger uh, transition. So what we want is something that's basically going to um, cover the... Um, cover the scene uh, and or the, the green background and then uh, have something happen. Perhaps we'll have the uh, the logo fly in or something like that uh, and then it will all disappear out to reveal the green background again. So what we need to start with is we need to start with a new slide. So I'll come to, uh, where is it here? <laughs> and if you remember from the previous uh, video, uh, we've already created a master slide that is green. So basically any new slide I add, we've got our blank canvas. Uh, and what you can think of is if it's green on the screen, then it's basically transparent when it's in Ecamm Live. So we're effectively starting with a completely transparent screen and we want to build out our transition and our uh, stinger transition. So what we're going to do is have something that sort of comes in. So uh, with my um, my sort of slides, I tend to have, uh, or my sort of screen, I tend to have this sort of slanted uh, uh, angle with a uh, sort of green, uh, sorry, a blue and yellow. So I'll do something similar to that. Let me think if I just get a shape, take a square, I'm going to make this big enough because basically what we want to do is uh, just to sort of explain the principle. Basically, this is going to move in. There's going to be something else that's going to happen on the screen while the screen is completely covered. Uh, and then this one is going to move out. Now, in the meantime, uh, once we've made the animation in here, the principle is that it's going to move in to completely cover the screen. While the screen is completely covered in Ecamm Live, we're going to switch to a different scene. Uh, so that when this animation continues and it moves out, it's then going to reveal the new scene behind it. So that is basically what is a, uh, a Stinger transition is. So I'm going to just add a little bit of an angle to this because, as I say, that's the sort of style that I've got on all of my things. But you could think however you wanted to do this. Uh, it could be a circle, could have something like coming out from the middle, expanding out. Uh, you've got all of the power of uh, Keynote's um, uh, animation features at your disposal. So something like about that it looks like the usual angle that I have <laughs> uh, and what I want to do is I want to make sure that these corners uh, at the top and this corner basically completely cover the scene so that as it moves across like that it's going to uh, make sure that it does completely cover it so it's better to be too big than have a sort of last little you won't want that corner sticking out at the bottom there uh, so uh, so this is going to be a little bit tricky to see so let me just make this maybe 
just a little bit smaller and then I can zoom in so that you're not looking at it quite so small. Is that a bit better? <laughs> that should be a bit better. So yes, this is what we want to do. This is going to basically move across the screen. So I'm going to set the uh, the color of this and you can see how that yellow lines appeared. That's basically shows that it's centered uh, in the vertical axis. So now I'm going to come and add a color to this uh, and I'm going to use my color. You can obviously use whatever color you want. <laughs> uh, so come over here to the format. That was the most pointless statement ever, wasn't it? You can use whatever format you want, color you want. <laughs> so I'm going to click on the little uh, color wheel here. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, these still catch me out, these little color icons. Sometimes it's easy to miss whether you've actually selected it or not. Like if I click in here to choose the color and I think, oh no, I don't want one of those. You might logically think that now you could pick a color from here, but you can see how this little uh, color wheel here is still actually technically grayed out, so it wouldn't actually do anything. Uh, it still catches me out after years of Mac usage to uh, not get those toggles right. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to pick my little blue color from the, uh, the background there, uh, from my color picker rather. So this is basically my sort of blue background. So now what I uh, could have is uh, I want to have my sort of logo flying in at the middle. Uh, so let me just grab my logo one second. Um, it's somewhere in here. <laughs> I did have even the folder open where it was thinking I'd be using it, but then I've just completely lost where it is. There it is, right? I'm gonna just drop that into here. Uh, so this is uh, my logo. So I'm gonna put that so that it's uh, centered. Uh, roughly about there. Actually, I actually want to make this a bit smaller. So if I grab the corner, now if I hold down option while I'm dragging the corner, you see how it keeps the center the same. Whereas if I don't hold down option, then as I drag it, it will just drag that particular corner. So uh, if you want, if you've got something centered and you don't want to move it off the, the sort of central location, then hold down the option key while you're dragging uh, and then that will keep it the same. So uh, I'm basically gonna have this logo sort of pop out into the middle of the screen. Uh, it's going to be a bit boring at the moment though, so let's add something else. Uh, I'll use my yellow color as well, so perhaps if we take this one, I'll just make this a little bit smaller and add a couple of sort of bands that are going to come in. Let me change the color of that one. So we've got the color selected, I'm going to change that to my uh, sort of yellow color. Uh, how about put one on this side and one on the other side. I would probably <laughs> put a little bit more thought and effort if I was doing this as a, a professional job. <laughs> uh, like I'm just totally eyeballing the distance to the uh, the edge, like here compared to here to make sure that they are equally spaced. So I'm just totally eyeballing it at the moment rather than uh, any sort of um, thing. Let's make this one a little bit smaller. So uh, yeah, maybe spend a little bit more than sort of two minutes thinking it out. <laughs> but uh, this will illustrate the point at least. So they look around about equal to me on either side. So if I just zoom in a minute, then these bars are basically going to appear. So what I want to do is think about how they're going to appear. But let me just make that one a little bit smaller. Uh, you can obviously play with this and uh, spend far too much time getting all the details right, but that looks around about uh, equal to me. So I'll leave it like that. That actually now looks a little bit small. So I'll just uh, embiggen that <laughs> to use Doc's word. So that one's going to come out there, right? So uh, this one we're going to have just sort of move all the way across the screen, the, the main sort of blue background. Uh, and I want these two perhaps to move in from either side. So how about we, um, uh, let's actually group these. I'm going to group them together. And so these two will move in from one side at the same time. Uh, I could be a little bit more <laughs> complex than this and have them sort of coming in separately at different timings but for the purposes of this video I'll just keep it simple so I'm just going to uh, select those two items uh, and then if I right click on them and click group you'll notice over here in the uh, uh, the the uh, object list <laughs> and if this one isn't shown by the way I did mention this in the last video but if you come down to here uh, then you can either show or hide this object list so Showing it makes it easy to see exactly what you're working with. So uh, as I was just about to say, <laughs> if you come here, right click and click on group, you can see that those are now uh, grouped as an item. Uh, and I'm going to do that now. So that basically means that when we're applying our animation, we can apply it to the whole group rather than just individually. Uh, like I said, it probably would be nice to do them individually. But for the sake of speed, I will just do it like this. And then uh, what I also want to do is I think um, let's have like a sort of... Uh, shimmer effect come across the screen as well uh, and the simple way that you do that which is a bit sneaky really is if I take this one uh, just get the uh, 
the height of it about right. I'm going to make that smaller. Uh, and at the moment, this is just blue, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it. First of all, I'll just change it to white so that we can see what we're working with. Now, basically, when you get like a shine go across a, the, the screen, it's uh, effectively just a sort of, it's lightening the color of whatever is beneath it. So the way that we do that, I've got this thing here. Rather than being a solid fill, I'm going to make it a, uh, a gradient fill. Uh, just one second, let me get this thing up here. I just had a sudden thought there, I don't know why, that I wasn't recording. <laughs> so uh, that would have been a bit disappointing, wouldn't it? For uh, for me at least, uh, but fortunately I am. So <laughs> I'm going to come into the fill and I'm going to come over to the, uh, the gradient fill here. Uh, and now that is from trans... Oh, no, I don't want that kind of gradient. I actually want advanced gradient. A gradient fill will go from one color to another, uh, but I actually want an advanced gradient because I want to go from uh, uh, basically one color to another to another. So I'm going to start um, down here. Look at this, it's all... Uh, in fact, that is already uh, transparent, so that must have been the last time I used a gradient. If I click in here and add one in the center, uh, let me just I'm going to make this something a little bit different just so that it's not already done because otherwise you're not going to see how to do it are you <laughs> so uh, change that to this color I'll just delete this one whoops don't do that Let me delete this one out here uh, and then I'll change this just to red right so uh, if I come into uh, advanced gradient fill like that I want to change this one to red rather there we go so this is you can see what's actually happening now this is a gradient so it's going from one color over here to another color over here. So what we want to do is we want to have it go from transparent to a sort of semi-transparent white uh, and then back to transparent again. So if you just double click in here or click once actually, uh, now we've got a third color in here. So if I was to select a completely different color, you can see it's basically tra uh, transitioning from uh, blue to yellow to red and it's blue to yellow to red. You can change the angle of it as well. So we could change this to be in this direction you can see this white line on the screen indicating the direction uh, but we do actually want it the way it was which was at 90 degrees to the actual shape so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here to this blue and I'm going to change that to white but I actually want it totally transparent so on this little uh, color picker down here and then you've got the op opacity so I'll change that to completely transparent now I'm going to come to this one in the middle uh, and I'm going to click on that one and I'm going to change that one to white uh, but this one, we want it uh, not totally transparent, maybe something like that. I can't actually see until I turn off the other one. So I'll come up here to this red one here uh, and I'll change this to white. And then I'll make this one completely transparent. So can you see how now what we've effectively got is it's kind of like a transparent uh, on either side, but we've just got this white bit in the middle. And the effect of that as it moves across the screen is it just adds a sort of like shimmering effect or shine effect if you like uh, so let me just turn that one down a little bit it's still a little bit harsh on that white so maybe 25 percent something like that so we just want a little subtle sh uh, shine to go across the screen right so i've got all the elements there now uh, i've got this bit that's going to move across the screen i've got these two yellow parts on either side that are going to move in i've got the logo which is going to do something enter into the scene somehow uh, and then I've got this thing that's got, just got, sort of going to flash across the uh, screen just so that it's basically all things in there that are going to, uh, when the screen is completely covered, we want to make sure there's something going on to add a little bit of interest uh, so that we can sneakily change our scene in the background uh, in Ecamm Live. So let's make sure that this one is actually off the screen. First thing we want to do is we want to actually have this one enter the scene. So I'm going to come to my animate. Uh, which you may remember from the last video, come to animate and we want to build in uh, this one. So we want it to basically come in from the side, don't we? So let's just click on add an effect and I'm going to use uh, move in. So there you can see it's moved in and it's covered the scene. Uh, next thing we want to do is also have uh, these ones move in. So I'm going to click on both of those and let's have those move in, but from opposite sides. So I'm just going to click on move in on those as well. Again, you've got all of these different animation styles at your disposal. Uh, so you can obviously choose whichever ones you want. That's just the ones that I'm using. Uh, so I'm going to come to this one though, the one on this side, and I'm going to come over to the animation panel and we can change the direction. So we want that one to move instead of left to right, we want that to move right to left. So 
if I just preview that, that one's going to come in from this side. I'll click on this one and preview that one. That's going to come in from this side. Uh, and then the actual logo itself, uh, let's have that one. Uh, let's look for an effect, shall we? Let's have that one as uh, fade and scale. So let's see what that one looks like. So it's going to fade in and it's put a nice little shine on it as well. So let's use that one. And then in terms of the sort of build order, if you remember, we can add an order to this. Uh, at the moment, they're all set to the default, which is basically moving on click. So we actually want these all to happen more or less together. So let me just move this one up here. Because uh, I think that what we want is, whilst the first two can move uh, come in together, I think we want a bit of a delay on these ones actually moving in. So let's just see if I uh, do these all together. I'm going to do it instead of after previous build, I'm going to do with previous build. So now they basically should all happen at the same time. So let me just preview that. Uh, so a couple of things there, that sort of fade in looks a bit slow. So the speed that the, uh, the, re the uh, initial rectangle is moving across the screen, the blue one, is one second. Uh, but this just looks a little bit slow and it's set to 2.5 seconds as a default. So let's just maybe half that. Uh, and then we'll come to these ones uh, and they looked a little bit slow as well. So we don't want stuff moving too slowly. Let's move that to 0 0.6. Let's try that again. And then that one doesn't quite look right on this side moving in. I'm sorry, let me just zoom in a bit. <laughs> that one at that side looks like it was coming in a bit too early as well. So let me just preview that again and see. Uh, it just doesn't look right, that doesn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add... Um, here it's starting with build one, so they're all going to happen at the same time, but I'm just going to add a little bit of a delay in both of these and see how that looks. Preview it. So it looks a little bit better, that does, because this one, the, the, the screen is covered by the time that this comes in. Now what we want to do is we want to have that little shine effect run across the screen. So I'm going to come to that one, which is this rectangle. Uh, and what I want to do is I don't want it actually to be in front of uh, the logo. I want it to just sort of be in the background. So uh, you can adjust the layers where things are. If I just move that across, you can see it would go completely across the logo. Uh, whereas what I want is I want it to be behind the logo. So I'm just going to drag it down uh, to there. Uh, and in fact, I wonder if it might actually might be better if we move all of that up to the top so that it does still appear above the... Um, these yellow bars. I think that probably looks a little bit better, but we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out when we actually run it. So the next thing I want to do is have the, this one basically to just move all the way across the screen. So rather than being a build in or build out, I'm literally just going to leave this off the screen to start with. This is a bit like we did with our uh, um, the text that we used on the scrolling text. We're basically just going to have this sort of scroll across the screen effectively. So I'll leave it there but I'll add an action which is to uh, move and as you may remember it automatically puts a start and an end position in but we just grab this end one and I'm going to drag it all the way across to the other side of the screen like that and then if I uh, have that happen after these two have come in I think let's have a little look let's try that so after build four uh, that's a little bit late as well actually. Let me start it with uh, with build one and then I'll just put that same sort of delay on it and let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's just, we don't want to waste too much time. We don't want people stuck on this uh, screen for too long. So uh, you want it to have something that's adding some interest and in covering up the screen but not staying on there too long basically because we don't want, to, don't want it to take too long. So the next thing we've got to do is the, uh, the, the sort of shine effect has already gone out of the scene, so we don't need to worry about that. But now we've just got to get these things all off the screen again. So what I'm going to do is add some uh, sort of outro traditions, if you like. Uh, transitions rather, not traditions. <laughs> uh, transitions. So um, we've got this one that's come in, so I'm just going to have that move out in exactly the same way. So if I click on build out and I'll add effect and we just go to this one move out so that one is just basically going to slide off the screen like that then we want these ones and let's do something a little bit different with those I'll have a build out and let's have a little look uh, fade and move uh, fade and scale perhaps uh, move out scale big 
yeah we'll have that one they're going to sort of basically seem like they're coming out to the screen so we'll try try that one and then in terms of the uh the timings we want this all to happen at the same time again so i'm just going to click here and have with previous and then we want this logo to disappear as well so let's add an action to that uh, uh sorry not an action a build out and we'll click on add an effect and then let's do um Let's have a look at fade and scale. Let's have that one go back the way it came, basically. So that's going to just fade out. So I'll add that one in there. Uh, now, we, it's still a bit slow, isn't it? So I'll move it back the way we did with the one at the entry. So uh, let us try that. In fact, we can actually have this all happen just one after the other. So this this is basically the uh, the first five here are the sort of the entrance of everything, or the first four. Then you've got the rectangle, the sort of shine effect that slides across the screen. Uh, and then you've got these four, which is all the outro, but we just want this all to happen continuously. There's going to be no pause in the middle. So I'll click on this rectangle and then I'll say after build five. So this will all happen consecutively. So now let's have a look how this looks in a preview. Completely covers the screen and then it wipes back across the screen afterwards. So there's a lot more that you could do with this. You could obviously tweak it and make it look a lot more pretty than I've made it look, but it does sort of prove the uh, the sort of concept of it. Because what I want to do now is if I go to play in window like this, uh, and then if I uh, just actually activate my green screen for one second, in fact, let me come to a different uh, scene. Or could you use it on this one? Here we go. So I've, I've now activated my green screen layer over the top of this scene. So if I just actually activate this, uh, this uh, this uh, slide now what you'll see is it actually wipes over the full slide now what that means is you saw what happened there as it came across the whole scene well what you can do is basically if i just activate that and now that the screen's covered if i just press a stream deck button it's brought me back to a completely different scene so that's actually the point of these uh these stinger transitions is to go from one scene to the next without uh basically noticing the transition you can just fade in and out of each of them and that is basically what a stinger transition is uh, and how you could do it with keynote now i wouldn't necessarily recommend that you're going to do this for um in fact let's come back to the other scene there we go i'll use it again <laughs> so i wouldn't necessarily you recommend that for your just general scene transitions in ecamm live that you're going to be using these sorts of uh, this green screen technique uh, it's more for if you are doing uh, presentations and things like that which is what i do with uh, ecamm live uh, where you do want to have these things and it's basically just all built into the flow of the uh, the presentation where you know what you're going to go from from one to the next step uh, and then this would just be built into it in the same way that you would have done uh, a, a PowerPoint or keynote presentation in the olden days <laughs> before uh, uh, Ecamm Live. So um, that's how you do it. But what about if you just actually want to use this Stinger transition as a Stinger transition in Ecamm Live and have it all happen automatically using Stream Deck? Well, that's what I'm going to cover next. So if I just come back to my uh, other thing and I'll use it again, obviously. We've just made it. It would be a shame not to use it, wouldn't it? <laughs> so I'm going to come back into uh, Keynote because it's actually very simple now to get this into a stage where we can use it with um, uh, with Ecamm Live. Whoops, I need to turn that one off. Don't I? <laughs> I need to cover, take off the green screen. So uh, let's have a look at this. Where am I? I'm in the wrong side. There we go. That's better. So now you can see in Keynote. So what we need to do is basically export this into the mo into uh, export this as a movie. Um, but just without the green screen. Now, if you were doing something quite complex with this, and by complex, I actually mean something like the previous example, this one here, uh, where we had the uh, the moving text in the background. Let me just give you this one again. So where you've got this moving green part, that's something that you can't really export that in Keynote with a transparency of the moving text. But fortunately, with the Stinger, it's actually really easy in Keynote to export this as a... Uh, uh, a movie with transparent uh, transparency because the transparent part is static everything else is happening over the top of it so all we need to do is make a slide with a transparent background and then this will actually export just fine as a movie with transparency so that's what we're going to do now just so that we keep this version of it i'm actually going to come here and duplicate the slide so now we've got uh, the slide uh, but in the background we've still obviously got the green so what we want to do is we want to change the background of this slide instead of to be green we want to change it to be transparent so i'm just going to click out of all of this stuff uh, and then i'm going to come to format and if you haven't got any particular element selected uh, so you just click out of all of that 
then it's going to show you the uh, the color and the format of the actual slide itself. So here you can see that our background color fill is uh, is that green because that's what's in the slide master. But if we come over to the color fill here and we just click on this one and we change it to no fill, then basically we're now in uh, got a transparent background. And if I move this out of the way, uh, it appears black, but that is actually uh, black because it's absence of anything. It is a transparent background. So now what we need to do is export this as a movie with a transparent background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to uh, somewhere. Where am I? <laughs> Keynote, file, and then in the export menu, there's export to movie. So that's what we want. So you go to Keynote, file, export to movie. And when you click on that, it will bring up this little window. So what we want to do is... Uh, we don't want to export the whole presentation. We just want this one slide basically and it's slide number four. So what I'm going to do is come to here and go to slide and we'll select here from number slide number four to number four. Uh, this go to next slide, we don't really need to worry about that because that's if you've got multiple slides, you can sort of build in a delay from going to one to, the, uh, to another, uh, but it will affect how long the actual movie lasts. So I'm just going to change that to zero just so that it is actually, uh, there's, that there's no delay or anything like that in it at all. Next, I'm going to come to uh, the resolution, 1920 by 1080. You could change that to 4K or whatever you wanted. Uh, and the important one to do here, though, is as a default, usually Keynote will be set to H.264. Uh, with that one, you don't get any transparency, but it's important that we do have the transparency because that's obviously the whole point of the Stinger transition. So for that, you need to come down to the compression type and just come to Apple ProRes 444. And then here you've got a little toggle export with transparent backgrounds. Now, if I click on next, it's going to uh, give me that somewhere. And what I want to do is let's just say I'll oh, put it in here for now. And I'll just call this uh, Stinger Transition. Like that. And then we're good to go. So now it's basically exporting that little Stinger Transition. And if I just click it in here. I should be able to just bring it up in preview. So this is it now running in preview. And there you go. That is the Stinger transition working. So what's the next step? Well, what we need to do now is we need to actually apply this in Ecamm Live. So let me just uh, come here for one second I'm going to close that. <laughs> I was trying to get audio hijack off my screen and I nearly closed it down. That would not have been a, a smart move, but there you go. Uh, right, so what I want to do is if I come into my screen sharing uh, demo mode for a second, like this. Uh, now I'm on 4K, so that might not be the easiest for you to see, but I think you'll see the principle. Uh, what I also need to do is get my Stream Deck open. I'm not very organized today, I do apologize. Um, so let's get shut down some of these things. We don't need the cameras, we don't need that one. So here we go. We've just got my uh, Ecamm Live, and this is, uh, we don't actually need this one now, so let's just. Save that one and close it down out of the way. <laughs> there we go. And I'll make this one a little bit bigger. Uh, so now what we're going to do is basically in Ecamm Live, we're going to add this movie file. So in the, here I've got the file, the, uh, whoops, I'm going to rename it. We've got the uh, Stinger transition file. So I'm going to add that as a, an overlay into Ecamm Live. So let me just come up here somewhere. God, I need to probably call some of these... Uh, these overlay folders that I've got. <laughs> uh, there we go. Right. So uh, what we want to do is add this as a video overlay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my little overlays at the bottom. And then down here, we've got this one, the one with a little sort of moving picture. So I'm going to click on that and we're going to add an overlay. And I'll click in here to add it in like that. Uh, and now that has added that right into there. So what I want to do now though with this is at the moment it's as a default, it's added it into the current scene. Whereas what I want to do is actually put that right over the top of everything. So I'm going to move it up to where it says show in all scenes. Okay. Now how long is that little transition? So the transition is, uh, it's four seconds long. So basically we want to activate that and then two seconds later, we want to sneakily switch our scenes. So if I was to do that on Stream Deck, where's my Stream Deck gone? Here it is. I can probably come in and show you this now. So here we've got a thing called Stinger Transition and I'm just going to switch between two scenes. So if I come into my screen sharing 
uh, this other screen sharing that I've got. It's a bit easier to see for you, isn't it? Right, let me come out of demo mode. There we go, we're in business. I think we're back to uh, something a bit more readable. So I've got a series of, uh, of buttons in here. I'm just gonna delete one of these for the moment. There we go, get rid of those. So what I'm gonna do is I basically want a multi-action that is going to trigger this overlay. Uh, it's then going to wait for a couple of seconds and then it's gonna switch to my main scene again. Uh, now you would have to do this for every particular transition you wanted so if I've got like this scene uh, and then I've also got my main scene uh, I've also got one like this where I'm on my other side of the uh, the thing looking at a different part of my desktop so for every one of these different sort of transitions from one to another uh, you would need to have uh, this thing set up so that basically it's going to um, uh, or rather for to go to every uh, scene rather so it would trigger the transition the stinger transition and then it would move to that scene if that makes sense so i'm going to put one in here for coming uh, basically coming to the main scene let's call this one my main scene <laughs> and then also coming back to this screen sharing so i've got two available slots here so the way that i'm going to do this is i'm going to use a multi-action so if i click on here and uh whoops I sh I'm clicking on my uh, my screen rather than in the actual application. That would help, wouldn't it? Create multi-action, uh, and then we're going to edit this multi-action by clicking there. So what we want to do is we're coming into the Ecamm Live menu, and I'm going to go down to the Show or Hide Overlay. In fact, actually, we want this one, Play Animation. This was one that's been added in in the uh, one of the latest betas, the beta 2, I think. So this is what we want for actually playing a video. So I'll come into this Play Animation, and I'll drop it in. Uh, and then here I can, it's actually selected the most top one on the list, which happens to be our Stinger Transition movie file, like that. Uh, so that's going to basically, when I press the button, it's going to start this playing. Then we want it to wait for uh, two seconds. Uh, in fact, was it two seconds? Hang on a minute. I think it was two seconds in total, wasn't it? Oh yeah, it was four seconds in total, so we want to wait two seconds. I was, I was right. I confused myself there. <laughs> We want a delay and the way that you add a delay is that is one of the ones out of the stream deck actions uh, i'm going to add the delay in and so we want to wait two seconds which is uh, the time is always given in milliseconds so two seconds is 2000 milliseconds uh, and then what we want to do is we want to switch to a different ecamm scene so let me come down to ecamm uh, and i'm going to go to my uh, run scene that one and let's say that this particular button here is going to go to my um, uh, my main scene like that. So now when I press that button, uh, it should, <laughs> we'll try this out right now, it should start that transition, then it will flick back to the main scene and then the transition will finish. So let's give that a go and see if it works. And you see it was a bit slow that, wasn't it? There was a bit of a delay, you caught the end of it. So let's just go back and uh, fix this because there will be a little bit of tweaking involved. Uh, so let's come back to the uh, Stream Deck delay again. If I get the right scene. So that basically needs to happen a bit sooner. I suppose, uh, depending on the timing of it, there will be a bit of a delay. Uh, so let's try, uh, instead of two seconds, let's try, uh, what do you think, 1.7 seconds. So 1,700 milliseconds. Uh, We'll try it again. Let's see if it works properly this time. Uh, there's still a little bit. It still needs to happen a bit quicker. <laughs> we'll get there. Hang on a minute. It will take a bit of tweaking. Uh, I'll try 1.2 seconds this time. There we go. I've just changed the, the, uh, the delay to 1.2 seconds. We'll try this one. And that has worked. So there, that is about the right time. 1.2 seconds is what I needed it to be set to. So now that we've done that one, let me just come back again because I can basically create, uh, I keep going to the wrong scene, hang on. Uh, let's just duplicate that button a minute. So if I come back to this action here, now we've got this one, I'm just gonna write on it. Normally I would put one of my pretty little icons, <laughs> pretty to me at least. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> uh, so I've got my uh, thing here. Uh, with my title so I can see that that's my main one uh, and then my other one is my screen sharing so I'm just going to copy that because now that we've actually created that button uh, the only thing that we're going to change is basically the scene that we're going to be going to so the delay will be the same the transition will be the same all we want to do is just change the actual scene so I'm going to call this one screen just so that I know it's the screen sharing one uh, I will update my icons in a little while you know that I will uh, but anyway come over to here and edit that uh, and then this one instead of the run scene we're actually going to change it to uh, let me come into my scene selection 
and screen sharing one is actually uh, the one that I'm in at the moment is that one. So now we've basically got two buttons and if I press those one of them will add the stinger transition to go back to the uh, the main scene uh, and then if I press the other one it will add the stinger transition to go back to the uh, screen sharing screen so what you could do is if I just come back again <laughs> I personally think that this is a little bit slow uh, I'd need to sort of if if I was actually doing this professionally <laughs> or spending more time on it for myself I would just tighten up all this time because that is a bit too long to spend between scenes um, but basically you could just set up so that all of your scenes have got this stinger in them between from one to the other and that is how you would do that uh, in uh, as an exported movie file with Stream Deck in Ecamm Live but like I say the uh, the other use case is of course the first one that I demonstrated to just work this all into your presentations and if you've got a presentation flow uh, which is the way I sort of do things um, for proper <laughs> proper presentations uh, then you can just sort of work it all in and you just know where you are then and it will flow properly but anyway I hope that that was uh, useful and if you've uh, had experience using Stinger transitions or got any other use cases for this sort of stuff then do let me know in the comments I do love hearing your ideas and suggestions uh, this, I, I pick up loads of great ideas from uh, listening to everyone else and uh, in the Ecamm Live group as well so always lovely to hear from everybody uh, so yeah leave a comment down below and while you are down there obviously don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to the channel as well this was video three of five so we've got uh, two more that I've planned to do uh, and in the next video what I'm going to look at is basically how you can add some masking into your keynote uh, slides so that it can have some uh, novel other effects in terms of the way you bring elements in and out of your scenes using screen sharing green screen <laughs> so uh, that video is coming up soon but uh, until i've made it there will be some more other great ecamm videos uh, coming up right now on the playlist from the bottom right have a great day everyone and i'll speak to you soon